Remember those clunky cross trainer shoes that were supposed to like inspire you to like cross train? They didn't inspire me to do anything. They were heavy and clunky. They inspired me to sit on the couch. When it comes down to burning visceral fat, the fat underneath our belly, it's very important that we vary our cardio. Okay, and what I mean by that is, you need to be consistently switching up the methods in which you do cardio so that you always have a very high perceived exertion. Okay, and I'm gonna explain what that means, and I've covered some of this in another video, but I wanted to be able to get a little bit more specific about why cross-training with high intensity has a very powerful effect, and getting down to the molecular level. Hey, after this video, if you're doing any kind of exercise or anything at all, I would highly recommend you check out this company called Element. They are an electrolyte company. They are awesome, okay? But the cool thing is you can try out Element totally free. You just pay shipping. So there are a few sample packs. So you get like eight sample packs of Element. You just pay shipping, you can try them out. So they are very sodium focused. So really good if you're gonna be sweating, but also really good if you're doing any kind of fasting or lower carb protocol where you're probably losing electrolytes more. So if you're gonna implement any of the stuff that I'm talking about in today's video, one of the things that I would recommend, even if you are training in a completely like nutrient deprived fasted state, utilizing an electrolyte like element that focuses on again that sodium potassium and magnesium combination there is going to be perfect plus the taste is amazing i love their mango chili flavor and i love they have like a watermelon salt one just amazing flavors and again you can try them out totally free just paying shipping and they're a big supporter of this channel so thank you element for the continued support and check out that trial pack down below just go to drink lmnt.com slash thomas again drink lmnt.com slash thomas all right let's dive into this okay so what we have to look at first is the efficiency of a given exercise so if you normally run you know that you're going to develop efficiencies with running okay you're going to develop flexibility in areas that allow you to run better you're going to develop uh, streamlined nutrient delivery i mean everything is going to get easier because that's the idea. So in order to get more out of your running, you'd have to push it harder. And eventually you're going to reach a tolerable upper limit where you can't push it anymore, but you would actually get a larger effect by switching over and doing a bike ride at an even lower intensity. Well, what does this have to do with visceral fat? What does it have to do with fat? Well, believe it or not, visceral fat, which is the fat underneath our belly, right? It's underneath our belly fat, but it protrudes and it can push our belly out. Okay, so a lot of us may be dealing with visceral fat issues and we don't even know it. And a lot of times we can be lean, but still kind of have that protruding kind of beer belly like thing. But a lot of times that is visceral fat related. And I don't want to go into the details of that. The reality is, is that that kind of fat has a very specific receptor on it. It's called beta-3 adrenergic receptors. And these receptors respond to acute spikes in adrenaline, okay? Now, when you work out, you're stressed out and you're going to have some adrenaline spikes, okay? No doubt about it. But if your adrenaline spike is drug out over a period of time, it's not as high, right? So you could have like a pretty steep bell curve of adrenaline that still goes pretty high, but if it's going on for a long period of time, it's going to kind of get attenuated and you're gonna just kind of have this bell curve. What we want is really quick spikes. And we want like these acute spikes in adrenaline because we have such a concentration of beta-3 adrenergic receptors in our visceral fat. When we get a really big spike like that, it has a very profound effect on how much of those uh, visceral fat cells release fat into the bloodstream. We want them to go through lipolysis. We want those visceral fat cells to release their stored tissue, their stored fat in the form of free fatty acids. The cool thing is, is that those free fatty acids are so close to the liver that when they get liberated, they can get burned very, very quickly. So this is all a good thing. But why isn't uh, like running just consistently at high intensity going to do that? Well, because eventually, no matter how much you're sprinting, running is not going to be spiking your adrenaline that much. So you need to jump over to maybe some rowing at a very high intensity, a okay, very high intensity that's going to stimulate an adrenaline response. The bottom line is it should always be a very intense shock to the body very intense shock and you can use the rating of perceived exertion on yourself with that because if it is intense it's going to trigger an adrenaline response if you feel good doing it like oh i'm in the zone this feels good i could go forever 
sorry, but you're probably just getting some endorphins. You're not getting adrenaline. It should kind of suck. It should be pretty miserable, not in a painful way, but in a, this is really, really dang hard way because really, really dang hard when you switch to a different move you haven't done before or a different form of cardio you haven't done before is what is triggering enough adrenaline to actually stimulate those massive amounts of beta-3 adrenergic receptors in your visceral fat. Okay. So cross training is great for all kinds of things, right? You get different mobility, you get different activity, you get different skill training, you get sure. But as far as just being able to stimulate more adrenaline, there's no doubt about it. I mean, when you look at some studies that have looked at like running versus cycling, generally running stimulates more adrenaline than cycling does. But that's not necessarily a fair assessment if you're looking at people that are efficient runners and people that are efficient cyclers. Then sure, that's fair. But if you're looking at you know, someone that's never cycled before and they're used to running, then they get a stronger visceral fat burning effect. So bottom line is one to two weeks of given exercise and then as soon as it starts to get easy, you need to shift again. It makes a huge, huge difference. And again, if you do it in a fasted state, you're gonna have an even higher spike in that adrenaline because you're already at a higher baseline of your stress. Fasting puts you into this stressful situation already because you're nutrient deprived, elevates cortisol, elevates adrenaline to a certain degree. It's gonna make it so that you can peak a little bit higher when you do do your high intensity work. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel. I'll see you tomorrow.